This podcast is about the capital allowances that can be claimed on buildings. There are different types of buildings and therefore different capital allowances, such as manufacturing buildings, commercial buildings, residential units and low-cost housing, and lastly, urban development zones. So firstly, we will look at Section 13 that provides an allowance on buildings used by the taxpayer in a process of manufacture. An example of such a building would be a factory. This allowance can be claimed on new and unused buildings, which means that the taxpayer erected the building himself or purchased it directly from the developer. However, this allowance can also be claimed if the taxpayer purchased a used building and the previous owner was able to claim a Section 13 allowance. The allowance on manufacturing buildings is not apportioned and is claimed at 5% per year for the, of the cost price for 20 years. The second allowance that we will look at is the Section 13 Quinn allowance on commercial buildings. Examples of commercial buildings are offices or storage facilities and so on. To be able to claim the allowance, these buildings must be used in the taxpayer's trade, but it will not be a manufacturing building or used for residential accommodation. The building must be new and unused, and in other words, the taxpayer constructed the building himself or purchased it directly from the developer. No allowance is claimable on the purchase of a used building. This allowance is also not apportioned and claimed at 5% per year of the cost price for 20 years. Take note that if only part of a new building is purchased, for example, only the second floor of a five-story building, then the cost price of that part of the building must be multiplied by 55% first before the 5% allowance is applied. The next allowance relates to residential accommodation used in the taxpayer's trade. So the taxpayer rents out the unit for income or provides accommodation to its employees. The taxpayer must own five units or more for these two allowances to apply. And a typical example of a unit would be an apartment in a block of apartments. But the residential accommodation can also be a standalone unit, like a townhouse or a house. The units must be new and unused, and the allowance is again not apportioned. The amount of the Section 13.6 allowance on residential units is calculated at 5% of the cost price of the units. And again, if only part of a building is purchased, then the cost price of that part of the building must be multiplied by 55% first before the 5% allowance is applied. However, if the residential units qualify as low-cost units, then the Section 13 SEP allowance applies, which permits an allowance of 10% of the cost price per year for 10 years. A unit will qualify as a low-cost residential unit when the purchase price of a standalone unit is less than 300,000 Rand, or in the case of an apartment, less than 350,000 Rand. Where the building or apartment is let by the taxpayer, then the rental charge must be less than 1% of the cost of the building or apartment. The last allowance that we will look at is the Section 13 Quad allowance on a building situated in an urban development zone. This allowance must be used solely for the taxpayer's trade, and this allowance is also not apportioned. The percentage of this allowance depends on how the building was dealt with by the taxpayer. If the taxpayer converted or refurbished an existing building where the existing structure is preserved, then the allowance is claimed at 20% of the cost per year for five years. If the taxpayer constructed a new building or added an extension to the existing building, then 20% of the cost is claimed in the first year and 8% for the following 10 years. When the costs were incurred by the developer and the taxpayer merely purchased the converted or new building that is situated in an urban development zone, then the allowance can only be calculated on part of the purchase price. If the taxpayer purchased an existing building, then the cost price uh, the, must first be multiplied by 55% before the 20% allowance for five years is applied. If the taxpayer purchased a new building, then the cost price must first be multiplied by 30% before the allowance of 20% in the first year and 8% in the following 10 years is applied. So in closing, 
First determine what type of building you are dealing with and then consider the requirements of that section before you apply the calculation and deduct the capital allowance. Thank you.